Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. For the first time in a hundred years, the U.S. bishops are gathering this summer over the 4th of July weekend for a spectacle, the 2017 Convocation of Catholic Leaders, the joy of the gospel in America. They've been talking about and planning this for six years now. The point is to bring all the bishops together with about 3,500 folks recognized as Catholic leaders and have a great big huge discussion about how to serve the world by spreading the gospel. It's supposed to be an opportunity for the leaders to speak their minds and think outside the box, hate that expression, and come up with ideas and slogans and plans and programs to evangelize the country. The three bishops who are the more or less in charge of it gang are New York's Cardinal Timothy Dolan, who has a homosexual cabal in his chancery running the New York Archdiocese, protected by former New York big-time cleric Cardinal Edwin O'Brien. Boston's Cardinal Sean O'Malley, who loves ecumenism and is presenting the faith as just one among many and whose top-ranking chancery officials pull down enormous salaries and Bishop Richard Malone of Buffalo, who loves the immigration issue and was the auxiliary bishop in Boston under Cardinal Bernard Law back in 2000, helping to cover up and deflect attention away from the homosexual priest sex abuse scandal. The church in the United States needs to be reminded that we are one family with one mission, disciples of Jesus in evangelization. That mission includes helping a divided nation uh, see that it's called to be a family as well. We're assembling Catholic leaders from across the country, all across turfs and across ethnic and economic lines, in, from every area of Catholic life, to focus on what it means to be a missionary disciple. That term, missionary disciple, is all the rage in ecclesiastical circles these days. It sounds so profound and fashion forward. You aren't with it in the church these days if you aren't a missionary disciple. It's always about vocabulary with the Church of Nice Establishment. There will be a nauseating stream of speeches, many by bishops, others by leaders, about having to have an encounter, to go to the peripheries, meeting people where they are, accompanying them, and so forth. What, he, what there will not be is talk of the actual realities of the church in America today. The need for seminaries to produce well-formed priests who present a masculine air of strength and zeal for souls. Little will be said of the rampant homosexual clergy crisis, the failure to preach on the intrinsic evils of contraception, the need to completely overhaul most chanceries throughout the country and get rid of the liberal barnacles that have attached themselves to the institution back in the 1970s. There will be no discussion of the complete failure to catechize and evangelize Catholics with the authentic faith, as opposed to false ecumenism heaps of rubbish like the Protestant-inspired Alpha program or Just Faith. There will be no discussion because who there would really be prepared and sufficiently formed to talk about it. The need to convert people to the Catholic faith, to restore reverence and faith in the Blessed Sacrament, to shoot down all the abuses that occur every single Sunday in masses all over the country. There will be loads of talk, vomitous loads, about immigration and ecumenism and poverty and human rights and unemployment, and social injustice, and the need to embrace the LG LGBT mantra. Every now and then, someone will occasionally throw a bone to the almost 10,000 babies who will be chopped to pieces in their mother's womb and sucked out by a medical vacuum cleaner during the three days that this convocation plots out how to preach the gospel. Understand that what's going on here, despite the good intentions of many attendees, this is the placing of a plan to cement the social justice garbage hegemony and secure it in place for the foreseeable future. Documents will be produced and final papers published about the need for heading out to the margins and abandoning structures which get in the way of relationship, the need to disrupt anything and everything that violates the false gospel of social justice. That this is a time for a national conversation about how to better fulfill our mission. For Cardinal Dolan and Cardinal O'Malley to simply ignore the fact that the church is in fact not one any longer is beyond pathetic. There is no 
Catholic identity, certainly not authentic Catholic identity, because for the past 50 years, the bishops have torn it apart, some deliberately, others naively. So with the church sufficiently in ruins, essentially demolished and laid waste, now the ascent of the modernist crowd can be completed. It will all be about, in the end, social justice and fellowship with the world. The bishops will appear to have the support from recognized lay leaders who have all been hand-selected and privately invited from various dioceses. In short, if you are already a member of the in-crowd, then we value what you have to say. Will any of those lay leaders have the guts to stand up at a microphone at a plenary session and declare that the men who are now being appealed to to solve the crisis are the very ones who have caused the destruction of the faith in the United States in the first place? Will there be a John the Baptist among them? The whole social justice brigade, emphasis on social as in socialist, led by Catholic Relief Services, CRS, which regularly participates in handing out contraception in poor countries, those folks will be center stage. The organization is in fact one of the ones helping to pay for the event and whoever pays the piper calls the tune. The CCHD, the, the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, the Democratic Party tool of the Bishops' Conference since it was started in 1970 by homosexualist Cardinal Joseph Bernadine, who created the deceptive, seamless garment approach to abortion, his group will be there with bells on. And of course, the mother of all the social justice initiatives at the USCCB, the entire Department of Justice, Peace, and Human Development which does little else than pay lip service to justice and peace and human development for the pre-born, yep, the whole shooting match will be there. The false ecumenists, the socialists, the poorly catechized, the liturgical abusers, the proponents of the homosexualist movement in the church, they'll all be there. They will deceive many of the delegates who will be there in all sincerity, not realizing the real reason that they will be there. Everyone will get a chance to speak, and no one will be listened to because the outcome is already determined. There will be no talk of a reform of the liturgical abuses. There will be no talk of actually preaching the faith itself to the few Catholics who are still left in the pews. There will be no mention of creating a truly authentic faithful catechism for religious education to reverse decades of heresy and dissent passed off as catechism. Nothing will be done which will kill the goose which lays the golden egg for the bishops, those immigration dollars that flow into the coffers by the hundreds of millions from the federal government. It was interesting that in his short talk to the bishops, Cardinal Dolan said it was from the last convocation, called in response to U.S. involvement in the First World War a hundred years ago, that the idea of a national conference of Catholic bishops was first seriously considered. Well, we see how well that all played out over the past 50 years. This is a consolidation of power and influence to set in stone the ideals of the Church of Nice and give them the official stamp of approval. Great coalescing at a great convocation. The leadership is stacked, the agenda is stacked, the outcome is stacked, and the delegates will go home all enthused and jazzed up, thinking the sheer size of what has happened makes it important. Meanwhile, for every convert that comes into the church, six, six, Catholics will walk out because the Church of Nice lives in an echo chamber. Catholics by the tens or hundreds of thousands every Sunday will continue to make sacrilegious Holy Communions. Fewer Catholic marriages will occur. More teenagers will abandon the faith and parishes will keep closing. And of course, the recessional hymn for the closing, for the closing mass of this would most fittingly be, all are welcome. Well, not all, not the ones who would stand up and say, the emperor has no clothes. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.